Electricity, properly harnessed and controlled, is one of the single most beneficial discoveries known to man. It's become almost as much a part of our everyday lives as breathing. We live with it and enjoy its many advantages day in and day out. And certainly being on the job in today's world means dealing with electricity. It's a sure bet that you work with some form of electricity every day. So what's the big deal? Well, each year, thousands of people die or suffer injury in the United States alone from electrical shock. You see, aside from being a great benefit to mankind, electricity mishandled or used carelessly is also one of nature's deadliest forces. Too many electricity-related deaths and accidents occur each year in the workplace. But you already take every imaginable precaution and can see any dangerous electrical situation, right? Well, if that's the case, why is it so many workers are injured or die every year because of needless electrical accidents? Think for a minute to the day-to-day -day situations you experience in your job. When was the last time you were in too much of a hurry to wear your hard hat or insulated gloves? Can you recall a time when it was just too inconvenient to shut the main power off? Or maybe you observed a coworker who decided to skip safety because he thought he knew what he was doing. Whatever the case may be, the big problem with electricity is that most of the time you don't get a second chance. One mistake, either carelessness or inexperience, can have deadly results. Let's look at the cases of four people who might have been your friends or coworkers. People just like you who have family and friends waiting for them at home. We'll look at each accident. Then we'll explain why each incident occurred and how it could have been avoided. This first case involves six workers on two different shifts. And it illustrates the fact that when working with electricity, cutting corners on even standard safety procedures not only puts your own life in jeopardy, but the lives of others. Two experienced electricians, Paul and Mark, traced an electrical problem in a high-powered piece of equipment. The problem was in a 440-volt three-phase circuit breaker. They disconnected the breaker from the load side. Then they tested it electrically using a megometer and found it to be electrically defective. Well, defective. Let me see it. Order another one. After Paul removed the breaker, he placed it on a counter away from the breaker box. Mark proceeded by ordering a replacement breaker. They assumed that they would later install the new breaker when it was delivered. Therefore, both men neglected to tag the defective breaker as out of order. In addition, neither man communicated the status or location of the defective circuit breaker to their shift supervisor, and the supervisor failed to check back to see that the circuit breaker had been installed. Mark had every intention of installing the replacement breaker before leaving that day. Unfortunately, the replacement was not delivered until so late in his shift that he had no time to finish the job. I'm out of here. The second shift supervisor has assigned the installation to a second team of electricians. The problem is, no one on this shift knows which is the replacement circuit breaker. Not following company tagging and communication procedures has, in effect, created a potential disaster. Here's a replacement breaker. I can't believe they didn't finish up. We'll never get this rewiring job done if they keep pulling us off of it. Frank, it's only a circuit breaker installation. 
It's a three-minute job. Let's get on with it. Yeah, well, a bunch of three-minute jobs add up to be a lot when you can't get your own work done. Uh, this just won't fit. Well, Frank, the right one's got to be around here somewhere. They said it was delivered. Hey, here it is, Frank. Here's the replacement breaker they brought. Okay, I'll get rid of this one. Well, everything looks all right with this one, Frank. It works mechanically, but why don't we get the maker and check it? Look, we've been fooling with this long enough. That one didn't fit. So this has to be the right one. Well, you're, you're probably right, Frank. How are you guys doing? You guys have been out here for a while. What's the problem? Nothing major. See? Fits like a glove. I'm going to close it now. Well? Defective. Impatience and not following proper testing procedures turned that potential disaster into a tragic reality. That man received severe burns and then died during surgery a few days after the accident. Even with the errors made by that first team of electricians, that fatal explosion could have been avoided. Let's review. The first team neglected to tag the defective circuit breaker after removing it. Because they assumed that they would later install the replacement breaker, they neglected also to communicate crucial information about the breaker to their shift supervisor. But he, in turn, failed to follow up on the status of the job itself. The new breaker was delivered too late in their shift, so they did not finish the job. On the second shift, the supervisor was not aware of the status or placement of the two breakers when he assigned the installation to the second team of electricians. He should have waited to assign the job until he found out exactly which circuit breaker should have been installed. The worker's first mistake was not finding out the status of the job before proceeding. Even more dangerous was not de-energizing the system before beginning the installation. Secondly, they neglected to pre-test the replacement breaker's mechanical and electrical integrity. Had they done so, they would have known beyond a doubt that they had the correct circuit breaker. Now, when the electrician brought the defective circuit breaker over, he tested it only for mechanical integrity. Although it was available, he did not test it with the megometer for its electrical integrity. In their impatience, they assumed that because the second breaker was okay mechanically, it must have been the right one. Those assumptions, along with their impatience to get the job done, cost one man his life. No matter how hard you try to justify them, shortcuts and impatience have no place in the electrical work environment. These workers took a shortcut in the most basic electrical safety practice, not de-energizing. De-energizing is your best method of protection in an electrical environment. However, remember that even though equipment has been de-energized, an electrical shock can still occur because some equipment is fed by more than one power source. And remember, some circuits can store a deadly electrical charge, which you may be unaware of when you de-energize. When discharging stored voltage with temporary ground wires, make sure you have a clean ground contact point to a main earth ground. To safely discharge the stored power, connect the other end of the temporary ground to the capacitor. And last, never try to find out if there is electrical voltage left in a disconnected circuit 
by touching the equipment. Consult the manufacturer's service manual or check with your company's safety supervisor. I'm sure you'll recognize the cause of this accident. The employee had received proper training to avoid injury, but neglected to follow company procedure. Let's take a look at the results. Hey, Deb, I'm back. I'm glad you're back. The boss called and said he needs equipment you're working on. And he said he needs it right away. Did you bring me my sandwich? I can't believe it. This is ridiculous. I'm the only one out there today. I do not have time for this garbage. You might like to know he's coming back in a couple of hours to pick it up. This is unbelievable. This guy's crazy. I'm supposed to drop everything else I'm doing and start... Jeff is under the gun, and he's not too happy. Like many of us, he works with power tools on the job. The thing is, Jeff is so wrapped up in his own frustration that he neglects the most important thing, his safety. We all use power hand tools from time to time. Whether it's on the job or at home, the dangers are the same. Jeff was trained by his company to operate hand tools safely and to report any faulty equipment. So why is he taking dangerous chances with his life? Let's review exactly why Jeff was injured on the job. First, he was distracted by his frustration. Distractions can come in many forms, and inevitably, they'll result in accidents and injuries. To work safely, keep your mind on the job or take a break. Otherwise, the consequences can be tragic. Second, Jeff neglected a basic principle of electrical safety. He used a three-prong plug with the ground removed. Third, he plugged it into an unsafe receptacle. The current going through that metal drill grabbed hold of Jeff and nearly took his life. Fortunately, he was rushed to the hospital and survived his accident. There are many cases where the worker was not so lucky. Jeff's case was one of using equipment improperly. His safety depended on the proper care and use of his tools. Learn from Jeff's mistake and follow these tool care tips. Check tools before using them to be sure they're clean and dry, that insulation is not cracked or torn. Be sure that your power tools have the proper insulation installed by the manufacturer. Never improvise tool insulation. Ensure that the proper safety guards or shields are in place as well. This next case shows us the dangers involved when developing bad habits dealing with electricity. Often the routineness associated with working around electricity allows us to become lazy and unguarded with exposed circuits. Watch what happens. Jimmy, how's it going? You did it again, Sam. You borrowed my half-inch wrench. Yeah, I found it in my pocket when I got home. Listen, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Hey, I uh, borrowed Mike's wrench. And uh, do me a favor and take it back to him for me, will you? No problem. I'll be back in a minute. I have to get my tools. That was a couple of years ago. Jimmy found a way to keep his tools handy and hidden from the guy on the next shift. The problem is, for convenience, Jimmy put his life at risk by bypassing electrical safety controls and neglecting company policies. 
It just took a couple of weeks reaching in to get his tools every day, and Jimmy forgot all about the danger. Bypass safety procedures long enough, and pretty soon you'll start thinking it's safe and OK, just like Jimmy. It's really the luck of the draw, though. And how lucky can you be day after day, year after year? Jimmy must have put his hand inside that electrical disconnect a thousand times over the last two years. He never de-energized the power, just reached right in to hide his tools until one day his luck ran out. It happens too often. Electrical accidents caused by reaching in. Workers bypass electrical safety controls or neglect safe de-energizing procedures. The results are always the same. Eventually, luck runs out, and either you or your coworker pay the price. There is really nothing worth the risk. So the next time you're on the job, check and see if you're betting your life on the luck of the draw. Jimmy storing his tools in that disconnect is an example of poor housekeeping. Housekeeping is the efficient arrangement of tools, equipment, and the proper cleaning and storage of personal protective items. It involves every worker's participation. Daily housekeeping means that you constantly be aware of your surroundings and take necessary precautions when you spot potential danger. For instance, Keep any moisture away from electrical sources and clean up spills promptly. Also, be aware of any atmospheric hazards in your work area. A stray spark from a live electrical circuit may cause an explosion if dust particles exist in the air. Keep your work area well ventilated. Any atmospheric hazards, including poor lighting, should be corrected as well. This last case will illustrate the danger caused by not wearing personal protective equipment when performing electrical repairs. Is this one? Yep. Voltage regulator unit four. Oh man, I left my case out on the transmitter. I'll be back. Hey, Bob, why don't you bring my gloves while you're over there? Bob? That electrician performed that exact same task probably a hundred times. But because he failed to follow the most elementary safety rules this one time, it cost him his life. 
How many times have you perhaps made the same mistake but got lucky? As we review the errors in this case, compare them to your personal work habits or attitudes on the job. The first mistake this worker made was not clearly communicating with his partner. He should have made sure that his partner heard and understood his request to get his gloves, or he simply should have retrieved them himself. Next, his attitude had a direct and fatal impact. His overconfidence around electricity led him to disregard certain basic safety precautions. And most importantly, he neglected to wear his personal protective equipment. No matter how minor or simple the job may seem, you cannot afford to work without proper PPE. It can save you from serious injury or even death. In order for personal protective equipment to protect you, it must be used and used properly. Inspect all PPE prior to performing a job. Checking safety glasses, hard hats, climbing devices, and your insulated rubber protective gear will help you avoid potential danger. Do not wear loose clothing that might get caught in equipment. Do not wear jewelry. Not only could it get caught, but gold and silver are excellent conductors of electricity. Keep long hair under your hat. Simple mistakes can have deadly results. In this program, we've looked at just a few of the tragedies that occur every year. Thousands of people die or are permanently injured simply because they fail to follow safety rules. Electricity kills. Let's review some of the key points that will help you avoid electrical accidents. First, realize that electricity is everywhere. It may appear safe on the outside, but it has the concealed capability to kill you instantly. Always take the time to de-energize. Second, don't allow yourself to become distracted. Keep your mind on your work and your safety. Third, immediately report any unsafe electrical working conditions or equipment to your supervisor. Fourth, always use personal protective equipment and properly insulated tools as required. And finally, Follow the safety procedures outlined by your company every day. With electricity, you can never take safety for granted. The fact that you're watching this video means your company takes safety seriously. On the clock, work safely by using every available precaution to stay alive for your family and friends who await you when you're off the clock.